Welcome to the NCLEX Review, where I help you review all the things you need to know for NCLEX. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Let's talk about the integumentary system. So the first thing we're going to talk about is wounds. And when it comes to wounds, we have a couple of different kinds of exudate. So things that it can leak like fluid, pus, like things like that. So when we talk about exudate, we can have serous exudate. This is a clear or straw colored. It is normal and part of the healing process. We have serosanguinous exudate, which is pink due to a small amount of blood mixed with serous drainage. This is also normal part of the healing process. We can have sanguinous this is red because it's due to blood vessel trauma. It's uncommon in wounds. We can have a hemorrhage, which is frank blood leaking from a blood vessel. This is also uncommon and may require emergency treatment. And purulent, this is a yellow, gray, or green, and it's due to an infection. So that's important to know. They may ask you if you see purulent drainage, what do you have to worry about? All right, so let's talk about pressure ulcers. So this is an impairment of skin integrity that can occur anywhere in the body. It's due to the skin being compressed on a bony prominence, restricting blood flow, and it has difficult time healing because of that. So the risk factors are skin pressure, skin shearing and friction, immobility, so our patients that might be bed bound or maybe they are in a chair most of the day. If they're not moving around, this is why we always want to try to reposition our patients so that we can reduce the risk of injuries if they are immobile. Malnutrition, incontinence, decreased sensory perception. So if they can't feel that there's pain there, then they might not know to readjust and things like that. When it comes to pressure ulcer staging, uh, there are different stages. So a stage one is when the skin is intact, non-blanchable with local redness. That means when you push on it that it doesn't blanch, so it doesn't turn white and then turn red again, so it just stays red. Then we have stage two. This is going to be open, shallow, red, pink in color, no sloth, intact, or an open blister. So just think like the top layer is just sheared away. Stage three is a full thickness skin loss, possibly visible fat, but no bone or muscle showing. Stage four is full thickness skin loss with bone, tendon, or muscle showing. And then unstageable is a full thickness with sloth. So it looks like scabbing or SCAR, which is black necrotic tissue. That would be unstageable because we can't see how deep it goes. So first we have shingles. This is also known as herpes zoster. It's due to a reactivation of varicella zoster in a patient with a history of chicken pox. Shingles is contagious to people who have never had chicken pox and to those who haven't been vaccinated against the disease. Signs and symptoms are an eruption occurs in a unilateral segmental distribution on the skin along the infected nerve. So it'll be unilateral, so it'll be on one side of the body and it will be distributed along the nerve pathway. We'll see fever, burning pain, puritis. Our nursing interventions, patients should be on contact precautions, patients should avoid scratching the area, and we can assess the seventh nerve because Bell's palsy is a complication. MRSA, signs and symptoms, it can appear as a folliculitis or furuncles. Culture and sensitivity to confirm MRSA. Our nursing interventions include contact precautions. It can spread by direct contact with infected skin. We're monitoring first signs and symptoms of infection and we're administering antibiotics. Then we have cellulitis. This is an infection of the dermis and hyper. They're gonna have pain, tenderness, edema, fever, arrhythmia, and warmth. Our nursing interventions are rest the affected area, apply warm compresses to promote circulation, and administer antibiotics. Then we have psoriasis. This is an autoimmune disease causing a rapid turnover of cells. There is no cure. 
We see shedding, a silvery plaque on renin skin. They might have paritis, so itching, a yellow discoloration or thickening of the nails if they're infected, and they can have joint inflammation with psoriatic arthritis. Our nursing interventions are to avoid triggers, stress, trauma, infection. They'll use topical corticosteroids, sometimes phototherapy. We want to advise them not to scratch. Stress makes it worse. Medications are methotrexate. Sometimes they'll use that and to avoid alcohol. Then we have Steven Johnson syndrome. So this is a medication-induced skin reaction, which occurs through an immunological response. Example, NSAIDs, antibiotics, and anti-seizure medications can cause this. It can be systemic involvement like the eye's respiratory system, and it can result in blindness. So signs and symptoms, initially they'll have flu-like symptoms and erythema on the skin and mucous membranes. Then they'll start to have vesicle erosions and crusts on the skin. And then they'll have severe systemic symptoms, can cause ulcerations on the larynx, bronchii, and esophagus. Our nursing interventions are to discontinue the meds, administer antibiotics, corticosteroids, and supportive therapies. Now let's talk about burns. So when it comes to burn depth, we have superficial thickness burns. This is damage to the epidermis. They're pink, red with no blisters, and it heals in three to six days. We all know these types of burns. Get them on our hand, no blisters, it's just red, it burns a little bit. Then we have superficial partial thickness burn. So this is damage into the dermis. It'll be pink and red with a blister and edema, and it will heal in 10 to 21 days. You can then have deep partial thickness burns. This goes deeper into the dermis, red skin with white dry areas, and no blisters due to dead tissue that heals in three to six weeks. So an important thing to note is if it says a patient with blisters, we know that's superficial partial thickness burns. Again, we wanna find the differences, right? So full thickness burn, this is destruction of the epidermis and dermis. It'll be waxy, white, deep red, brown, or black, dry and hard skin. Healing takes weeks to months and it can involve skin grafting. And then we have deep full thickness burn. So the injury extends to the muscle bone or tendons. Skin is black and hard, healing takes months, and it involves skin grafting as well. So our priority nursing actions are to assess airway for patency, because always airway breathing circulation first, administer oxygen if needed, obtain vital signs, initiate an IV line and begin a fluid replacement. So again, this is our airway, this is our breathing, this is our circulation, because we wanna prevent hypovolemia, shock and preserve organ function, elevate extremities if there's no fractures, keep the client warm and place on NPO, assess for signs and symptoms of infection, urinary output is the most sensitive non-invasive way to monitor cardiac output and tissue perfusion, avoid IM or sub-Q medications because absorption through the soft tissue is not reliable, and proper nutrition is essential to promote wound healing. The basal metabolic rate is 40 to 100 times higher than normal with burn injuries. So they need an increase in calories. And it's a big increase, 40 to 100 times. So let's talk about the rule of nines to estimate burn percentages. So the head is 9%. The arm is 9%. Legs are 18 each. Torso is 36. And perineum is 1%. And we want to remember that we have a front and a back. So the head is 9, but it's 4.5 for the front, 4.5 for the back. The arm is 9% each. So each arm is 9% and 4.5 for the front, 4.5 for the back. Legs are double the arms because they're pretty much twice as big. 9% for the front, 9% for the back. The torso is the largest area, so it's 36%. We have 18 for the front, 18 for the back, and then 1% for the perineum. Then we have something called the Parkland formula. So this determines the amount of resuscitation that's needed in 24 hours after a burn. So this is gonna be four milliliters times the percent of the body burned. So again, and we find that percentage using rule of nines. And we give half of 
that milliliter amount in the, in the first eight hours. And then we give the remaining half over the next 16 hours. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.